بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله The question has been posed many times about learning Arabic, or many questions, I should say, have been posed about learning Arabic, what books to study, how to study, where to begin, uh, all kind of questions regarding a very, very important topic. And alhamdulillah, I see some of the brothers from Ahl Sunnah have also dealt with this question quite extensively and I, I haven't listened but I've seen the titles that our brother uh, Abdurrahman Hassan that he did something and it looks like it's an extensive lecture so I would advise to listen to try to gain and benefit from the knowledge that he's sharing what I want to say is as this is just a reflection while I'm here while I'm enjoying <clears throat> the doors, which I do and which I love to do. I, I wanted to uh, remind my brothers and sisters of just the general importance of learning the Arabic language. And that's because the Arabic language is going to free you up. It's a tool if you use it properly and you study it properly. It's a tool that will help to free you to an extent because the more competency you gain in your acquisition of the Arabic language it's going to free you from a lot of uh, unnecessary translation and dependence upon people who may make mistakes in their translation no one is free from their mistakes and we applaud all of those who are in the field of translation, especially those who translate beneficial text from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And this is Khair Azim, Wa Ajir Azim, and we benefit from their works. But the stronger competency you gain in your Arabic language studies. That's why I want you, for those who are Talib al-Ilm now, they're beginning in their path of knowledge and they are uh, beginning with the Arabic language, I want you to put all your energy into that. I want you to become strong and competent because that is going to lay a foundation for you. And let me tell you why. Let me give you real examples from myself. I've talked about this before and I'm not ashamed to say, you know, and that's because of my own laziness but Arabic like all the other sciences requires mumarasa it requires that you continue not necessarily that you continue when you go up and you have to keep going level after level that's great but mumarasa just meaning that you continue in your studies to gain a certain competency for example in my studies I found that I would study some Arabic, then I would stop because I, you know, move economic situation, kind of not finding a teacher and not realizing the importance of studying in whatever environment you're in. But, you know, you come back, you come back to the grind. I started in Yemen, had, started gaining some Arabic in Damaj and in, the, in Sana'a and in Aden, but then I left. Then I was forced to go back to America, work. You start forgetting the things that you get and I didn't have enough strengthen the Arabic language to be able to go to the text. It's taken me years to do that. And that was a push and pull, meaning starting to study and stopping, starting and stopping. So then the next time I went to Yemen, my Arabic became much stronger and I had a good class. I ended up, I had a beautiful brother. May Allah preserve them. I don't even know if they're living anymore. And I just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautiful, beautiful. And I love him. Lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses him and his, fa his family, his father, his, his mother and his sisters and his brother. I don't know if he had brothers, but anyhow, my beautiful beloved brother Adil Ubadi from a place in Yemen called uh, Dalek. 
and he used to tell me about it how they were fierce and you know what you know a lot of stuff about it anyway I love Adel Adel took care of me he was my brother and that's one thing I can say especially in that I've never felt anywhere else in this dunya so much as the closest I felt with the brothers in Aden you know I've lived in Saudi Arabia many years the Saudis they can be very good and even some some that were very good and very close to me and dear but I felt I was one of them I was one of them you know that's the difference what I found with the Shabab and Aden even Ethiopia to a greater or less extent very good with Ahl Sunnah but the Shabab and Aden and even Indonesia I've been to Indonesia and I also saw a lot of good brotherhood probably if you live there especially but I something special about the brothers in Aden got way off track anyhow Adil may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him bless him with genital for those whatever his condition is that he used to meet with me and 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 teach me we didn't have Arabic lessons per se and I would say yeah, I want to do some more Arabic lessons of course we were only commuted in Arabic he couldn't speak in English so I mean I had Arabic I I could speak I could read and I could write and so he was actually teaching me that's my first fiqh lessons he used to teach me in uh, Dura Bahia by Imam Shokani so he used to go that's where I learned my usul of tahara and stuff may Allah bless him may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and Sheikh Anwar uh, uh, Edrus Edrus or Edrusi I'm not sure their tribe Edrus in Aden as well in Khormaksar from the Shabab there anyhow he used to sit with me too, give me private lessons, my first lessons in the Usul al And you know, and, and he was teaching me and my Arabic was based, I was so excited to study Arabic books, you know, to, you know, those first lessons, how beautiful. And then I had a teacher who was not, you know, he was just a Muslim, alhamdulillah, good, loved Islam, probably an Akhwani orientated, but he wasn't like, you know, he's not a, he was a teacher. A professional teacher and I used to pay him to teach me in grammar so I was making a lot of progress like you could give me any sentence you know whatever you know and, and he'd say Khalid and then you know I'd come and I'd just give you the Arab a lot of that I forgot because if you don't continue with your studies and this is the whole point even though I got off track is that you have to continue uh, there has to be mumarasa you know there's can continue one because now I've forgotten so much Arabic and I'm forgetting uh, what keeps me now is I just read, you know, I read and I prepare, you know, lessons and stuff like this, but that's why I don't teach Arabic now, you know, hopefully in the future, but more than likely I will have someone else teach for Athari Institute. And because it takes a lot of preparation, a lot of revision, but the point is the stronger you get your base when you study initially, and then, and if you can memorize, even if you memorize, say if you memorize some poetry of um, Ajurumiya, okay, just that, and you have Itkan in that, you can go a long way, you can go, you can do what you need to do. You don't have to go, you know, to other high level text. Now that's great if you do, that's a stronger competency, we love that. But I'm talking about for people given Dao in the West and stuff like this. You need to be able to know and understand the text. And you need to be able to, uh, if you want, to be able to communicate with scholars that are Arabic speaking scholars. Okay, that's a beautiful thing to have that language, have enough competency where you can speak with scholars in other countries. For example, if I go to Indonesia and I want to talk to a sheikh there, well, our common language is going to be the Arabic language. So I'll be speaking to him probably in Fusha. He's not going to be speaking on Mia more than likely. Or Ethiopia, the same. When I talk to my brothers, some of them, they know English. But some of the uh, students of knowledge there and some of the scholars there that I know, they, uh, I know one, he speaks English. His English is very good. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, yeah, so the point is, is, is learning the Arabic, get the competency. So I was just reflecting on that and I just wanted to share that. Please, please, if you're studying Arabic, get it strong. Don't play. Don't stop. Get it. Finish. For example, if you're doing the Medina books, really someone who studies the, the three, those, just those three Medina books with it's con. I'm not just saying you studied it, but you got it. It's con. You got it with strength. You can do what you need to do. You can do what you need to do. You can go to the text. You can teach. You can, you know, if, you, if you've got it with great strength. 
And that's what I'm talking about. Get the competency. It's not about a lot. It's not about going levels and levels and levels. Because what you find, for example, like the Asheris and others, they really focus on linguistics and the, the, the getting a strong competency in the language, which is great. But a lot of them, they want to go way beyond. Like if you know some, so I'm talking about strong, high-level Ashadi Sufis and stuff like this. Those guys, you'll see a lot of them are very strong in language. Some of them are very, you know, like if you go to some of the countries like in Mauritania, wherever, Yemen, Mauritania, probably Egypt, uh, I'm sure Egypt, and all various African countries, wherever, wherever. They, they tend to be, that's a big thing for them. They will study high level of Arabic language and even tafsir, but you'll see that they, they tend to use that linguistic perspective more than, for example, the Salaf. They, meaning that they don't refer, whereas we refer back to the Salaf al-Salih, you'll see that, not that they totally ignore it, that's not what we're saying, but we'll say that that they they tend to look at things from a linguistic point of view, and this is where they go, uh, where they deviate as far as uh, the divine names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, and why they make ta'wil, because they say, you know, linguistically that's, you know, it's going to mean this, and, you know, and they're going to look for a linguistic way out from, uh, some of the problems and some of the tensions that they find with regards to accepting the nasus. Whereas Ahl Sunnah just says, La, we're not going to get into that. We accept the, the nasus. Allah said this about Himself. We say that about Him, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, in a way that he suits His majesty. That's it. We don't need to go into that. We, we don't really need to bust our brain and, and talk about things we don't know. Talk about the kafia. We don't need to look at that. We just, we're just going to accept it. You guys don't want to accept it? You want to make ta'wil of it? You want to negate it? That's between you and your Lord. So my point is, Ahabatifillah, strive your best, Ahabatifillah. Strive your best to get competency in the Arabic. It will free you a lot from the dependency and even sometimes the misguidance because people can play with you when you're dependent on translation. A lot of the brothers that are translating, there's a lot of brothers doing good work and they're doing good work in their text. But when you're totally dependent on them and you can't go to the divine sources and you can't go to the the explanations of the scholars yourself, then you, you're dependent. So you're dependent on another middleman, a, a third and a fourth and a fifth, you know, because you haven't studied and, and so forth. So, you know, it becomes problematic. They can play with you. They can knock your akal around like a ping pong. Oh, this is what the sheikh says. This is what the sheikh means. This is what this. And they can give you all kind of interpretation and you're just going to follow that. This is what has happened, unfortunately, with many of the people of Ahl Bidah and even some of the people who want the sunnah and try to adhere to the sunnah, but their desires got in the way. So they also uh, distorted the message and they used it, some of them, from their hoa for their own profit. You know, either financially or even as a, as a way to become famous, to marry women, to destroy the honor of people. You know, all kind of variant reasons why people do this. So my advice to Habit Filah again is learn Arabic and learn it strong.